further until that we know. Sorry, I'm going to be a terrible MC today because I'm a mess. <laughs> but thank you for your support. My name is Tara Flynn. I had an abortion. I'm not a murderer. I'm not a criminal. I'm not a pest. I am an Irish woman, and when I say Irish woman, please know that I am including and acknowledging women of all nationalities living in Ireland, along with trans men and anyone else who might need an abortion. But I am an Irish woman who had a crisis pregnancy and was forced to leave my own country to get the medical care and compassion I needed, like so, so many of you here today. Recently, I told my story in public for the first time. I knew there was a risk of nastiness, abuse, and general all-out shunning. It's the Irish way. The moment before was terrifying. I was not ashamed of having sought out the care I needed, even if my country sent me away to do so. But like so many, I was shamed into silence. I was told I was a criminal. I was afraid of stigma. The threat of it kept me quiet for nine years. And why wouldn't I be quiet? It's my private medical history, after all. Except, I couldn't stand in front of you and MC at marches like this anymore without telling the truth. It didn't feel authentic to be up at the front, but somehow on the sidelines. And I grew tired of the stories of women who don't have a platform being told online and at abortion rights campaign speak out and then quickly brushed aside. And so, I decided to share my story, and a week later, so did Roisin Engel in the Irish Times. She shared her own, and she's here today. <laughs> and not to speak for Roisin, she can speak for herself, but I, the reason I didn't do any press afterwards, hardly any at all, believe me, they all wanted the goss. But the reason I hardly did any press was because I'm very clear on this. This is not about me. I was forced to travel for medical care I needed. I told my story. But this is the story of about 200,000 of us, women living in Ireland who have been ignored, who have told their stories and had the government and the media pretend that we haven't. No one should have to tell their story. Oh, well, I'm glad I did. Oh. I was braced for attack, but what I was not prepared for was love, support, and so, so many private stories, and righteous, righteous anger. We've had enough. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, I didn't know, and I don't think our politicians knew, that we have an army. For years, marches such as this have been dismissed as some womeny, fringy thing. We are not some womeny, fringy part of society. We are society. Underestimate us at your peril. You can't put a lid on a volcano, and if I were you, I wouldn't try. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate the support these last few weeks. I really do. It's made very something very personal and uh, very complex a lot easier. But as I said, this is not about me. Are you ready for your first incredible speaker? Wait, because we have uh, three or four speakers here, and then we will march together, standing for all the women who 